Lisa here from Fun Hands on Learning. And today I'd like to show you the color learning activities and the shape learning activities for unit, no not unit, for week six of the Hands on to Learn preschool curriculum. Now even if you don't own this curriculum, this video will hopefully give you some fun ideas of things that you can do with your students. The first thing I have here is for this week, we are working on the hexagon shape. So I have a poster for each of the shapes that we learn in this curriculum. And there is a poem that goes with each one. So this week's poem goes like this. I'm a hexagon, just like a hive. I have six corners and six sides. So this is the, the shape uh, poster. We use this to introduce the shape. And then um, I also have a few things tucked in here, just some different activities that the kids can work on um, for hexagons. So this one here is the kids would use Play-Doh and they will go ahead and build a hexagon with their Play-Doh using this card. Also, you can do the same thing with um, popsicle sticks. So craft sticks is what they call them when I buy them and the kiddos can make a hexagon that way. We also use dry erase markers on these little strips here. These little strips here are a lot of fun for kiddos because they can use their dry erase markers. At least my kiddos enjoy them. And they go ahead and they trace the six sides and they trace the number six and it helps them to remember that a hexagon has six sides. And then this one is just tracing the hexagons and then this one is just kind of cute. It says color the hexagon. So they can trace if they want and they can just color the little hexagon men here on that one. Um, you may wish to put these onto a ring and uh, that way they can flip through them. And if you have all of the week's uh, shape activities, you can just add them all to one ring and then they can flip through the different shapes if you so choose. All right, um, you guys have probably seen these before. These come each week. The kiddos do these. These are for fluency and just remembering what a hexagon looks like. So one of them has hexagon faces and then the other one has real objects that are in a hexagon shape. So we have like a hive here, a necklace here that has a hexagon, and then we have one of those uh, pot holders that has a hexagon. And what the kiddos do is you provide them with manipulatives. Now. What I have here to use this week are my pattern blocks. So I'm going to pull out some pattern blocks and I'm going to put them on the table here. And then what the kiddos would do, there you go, is they would match it up and they would say the name of the shape and the amount of size. So they can even say the amount of vertices if you want to teach them that too. Sides and vertices are going to be the same. So they would take a shape that's the proper shape. They'd look at their shapes here that are mixed up and they have to find the hexagon. So here's the hexagon and they have to say as they fill in the circle, a hexagon has six sides and six vertices. A hexagon has six sides and six vertices. A hexagon has six sides and six vertices. And they will do that three times and that helps with muscle memory. Okay. And then on this one, they will do the same thing except for they can say the item. So they would do it like this. Okay, so you mix up your shapes again. They have to find the hexagons and they do it like this. A hexagon has six sides and six vertices. A hive is in a hexagon shape. A hexagon has six sides and six vertices. A necklace is in a hexagon shape. A hexagon has six sides and six vertices. A pot holder is in the hexagon shape. So it just helps them to attribute real, uh, real things with the shape. Okay, and then there's also some more tracing. There's some fine motor sheets that come along with it. And this fine motor sheet, um, you can actually print out in black and white. You don't have to print out in color. I have it slipped in this slip cover, but when you're gonna get ready to use it, you wanna take it out because what you're gonna do is you're gonna provide the students with some paint and some Q-tips. And then what they will do with their little Q-tips is they're going to dot it in the paint and then dot the hexagons and then they're going to trace the word hexagon to remember that what a hexagon shape looks like and also practice their fine motor skills in that way. So this one is shape name fluency. It's kind of like our fluency strips here. 
but this one they um, do it a couple of times they t touch each box and say the shape name and the number of sides and then they color a smile each time so for example they're going to go hexagon has six sides a hexagon has six sides a hexagon has six sides or you can ha also have them do the vertices a hexagon has six sides and six vertices a hexagon has six sides and six vertices a hexagon has six sides and six vertices okay so they can go on like that until they get to the end then they color in the smiley face for each time that they do it it's just again for fluency or instead of just touching it if you have the shapes available like i do as they say it they can just place the shape you know on each spot as they say it all right let's move on this one is shape identification and so what the kiddos do is they use any kind of manipulatives you have available to cover up the hexagon. Again, you could have them use their shape, or if you have other things that you want to use as manipulatives, you could do that as well. So here are our counting bears. So we'll just use those. All right, so they just have to look and cover up the hexagon. So this is a hexagon. This is a hexagon. They may get mis um, misconstrued with this one this is a pentagon it only has five sides and we already did a pentagon last week so hopefully they wouldn't get mixed up on that one all right so here's hexagon anyway so just going to cover up all the ones that are in wait a hexagon shape this is pentagon from last week hexagon and then hexagon okay and then you can also have them name the shapes that they didn't uh, cover okay why didn't you cover this shape and then they can say well because that's a rectangle or why didn't you cover this one why don't you cover this it's a square so on Okay, for this next activity, you need to just provide the kiddos with any kind of manipulative you have. Today, I decided that what we would use are our uh, caps. <laughs> These are the caps that you would find on those squeezable food containers for kids um, and for babies. So what we do is we save them and then um, we use them for different activities. So that's what we're going to use, but you can use any kind of manipulative you have. You could use... Oh, Excuse me. You could use buttons. You know, you can use whatever you have. You guys have seen some of our manipulatives. We have uh, pom poms with magnets attached. We have right, sitting right here that you can't see right now are our, our mini erasers. So you can use anything that you have available. Now, what I would have them do is they're going to fill in those little circles on. The hexagon and you're reminding them that this is the shape of a hexagon and a hexagon has six sides this is what a hexagon looks like and now we're going to practice our fine motor skills so i have some fine motor tools that i would have them go ahead and use and what they're going to do is they're just going to pick up each one and place it on the circles until they have filled up the whole thing so they're not only practicing their shapes they're practicing their fine motor and you know with preschoolers they definitely benefit from that kind of practice so um i got my hi buddy i got these fine motor tools you want to see that from um where did i get them i think i got them online from amazon i think i searched for kids fine motor tools and i believe the set that i have is from learning resources maybe or yeah one of them um or it might be Lakeshore Learning, one of the two. So, all right. Now we are getting into some of the activity centers. So I'm going to show you this activity center. It's called Spin and Make a Hexagon Hive. So there are two mats that you get. The uh, spinner mat that looks like this. You don't have to use a spinner. You can use a pencil and a paper clip, but I happen to have spinners. And the other thing you get is a mat that looks like this. Uh, and this is what they're going to be filling up. Now, the only thing that you need to have available, let me scoot you guys out a little. Well, that scoots you in. All right. Only thing you need to have available are some hexagons. And I would suggest getting some pattern blocks because these are great for teaching shapes. All right, so we're gonna use our hexagon pattern blocks and I have some over here. And what the kids do is they spin the spinner here 
Oop. Well, you're going to want to attach your spinner. I don't have mine attached at the moment. But they would spin the spinner, and then whatever it lands on. Uh, yeah, mine is moving because I don't have it attached. But, uh, all right, so mine landed on a hexagon. So I'm going to go ahead and take a hexagon and start filling in my beehive. Now, if they spin and it lands on a different shape, they're going to use that shape to fill in their uh, beehive and their beehive is all hexagons so they're going to see that they can use other shapes to fill in a hexagon so if it lands say here on the diamond they can start filling it in there and then if they spin again and it lands on the diamond again say they can just continue on filling it up and then they're going to see that three diamonds make one hexagon or that makes a hexagon and so on so they're just going to fill in you know they have to spin of course every time and where are my triangles the other one you need to have for them are some triangles and of course this entire thing is made to go with the pattern blocks so you want to have those pattern blocks available and uh, they can start using those triangles and you can kind of show them how they can whoop they can fill up a hexagon with triangles as well so every time they spin they use whatever the spinner tells them to use to go ahead and build their mat of hexagons They're, it's a beehive the last shape activity is called cover the hexagons and it comes with these strips like this and then they just take a strip and they have to use whatever manipulative you give them to cover the hexagons so here I see a hexagon here and a hexagon here and I'm using hexagons to cover them up, but you don't have to. So for this strip, I see two hexagons at the end here. You get the idea. They're just going to go ahead and cover them up. Um, again, you can use whatever manipulatives you have. Here's, here's some buttons, okay? So you could have them cover them up with buttons. On this one, there's only... Oh, no. There's two hexagons. The little doggy's in a hexagon shape, too. All right? So, they would just continue on like so. Okay, this week we are working on the color brown, and so I'm going to show you that as well. Now, there are also activities for, the num for numbers and for letters, but in this video I'm only showing you the shapes and the colors. So, I'll do another video um, as soon as I can, showing you the alphabet and the number activities but for today i'm just going to do the the shapes and the colors because otherwise my videos end up being really long all right so again there is always a reference poster there are different activities these ones um i'm not going to go through them again because they're they're Mom, just like just yeah they're just like the activities that you saw with the hexagon so there's always some fine motor tracing and memory practice there and i just kind of stick them in here so i have it all together all right again this is just like this here is just like what you saw with the hexagons except for they have to color up the pictures that are brown um i guess i could show you that one real quick so what you would do is you would provide them with any kind of manipulative of these guys too okay um my kiddos here are all of a sudden came in from outside and they're wanting to talk with me okay okay so for this activity i would provide them with any kind of manipulatives you have that are different colors that also include the color brown so i pulled out these caps again and i would just kind of lay them all out and then i would have them find the color brown and then cover cover up the objects on here that are brown so this is the color brown i'm gonna color cover up the brown shoe and cover up the brown candy bar and cover up the brown hat and then you would need a couple more which i do have oh in here um but i'm not gonna go digging for them but i would provide them enough that they could cover up you know the bear the football and the bag as well okay again we have color fluency so they're going to do this just like they i was showing you for the shapes where they're going to touch each one and say the color so brown a shoe is brown brown a bag is brown brown a candy bar is brown and they're going to go along and say each one and then they can color in a smiley face when they're done so one of the activity centers for the color brown are these brown puzzles i'm going to go ahead open them up there are just a myriad of different ones in here get them out and basically what the kiddos have to do 
is put the pieces together and it's going to spell out the word brown and it's going to make an object or the picture of an object or something that is brown. All right, so there's that one. So we have a pretzel that is brown. All right, you get the idea. There are just a handful of these for the kiddos to put together. Again, I laminate mine because I like to keep them for uh, children, for more children in, in subsequent years. But another option that I have seen people do with these is that if you have like a whole classroom and you don't want to set this up as a center, what you can do is you can print them out black and white, have the kids color them the color brown, and then what they do is they glue them onto like a big construction piece of paper in order. And then they can take it home as like a little art project. So uh, that's another thing you can do with these. I do provide the black and white version. So you could go ahead and print these out black and white and do like I said, just give them uh, a piece of construction paper. I would give them a brown piece of construction paper and then have them color the picture. They have to color it brown. And then again, you're gonna, they're gonna put them in order and glue them onto their paper and then they can take it home as a, as a little craft activity. So anyways, but I laminate mine and we keep them um, for years and years and years. Okay, this next activity is called Roll and Build a Brown Dog. So what you need for this is you need the mat here that looks like this, and then the little pieces of the dog that look like this. All right, so what the kids are gonna do is they're going to roll a die, excuse me, I keep hitting my camera today, I'm sorry guys, and there's a big shadow because I'm right next to a window. All right, okay, they're going to roll a die. Here I have uh, this one is just like a, a cheap one that I got from the dollar store, but it's like really big, so it's kind of fun for preschoolers. They're gonna go ahead and roll that, and here I rolled a number one. So number one says you're gonna do their, the dog's head. So they're gonna put the dog here, and again, you're gonna talk about how this dog is brown. Okay, we're building a brown dog. Some dogs are brown. And so they're gonna roll again. If they roll the same number, they can roll again. Here I rolled a three, so now the three is the body. I'm gonna put the body on there. And again, so they're just gonna keep rolling until they've built the entire dog. Number five is the collar. Put the collar on him. Now, down here it shows what the dog is supposed to look like when you're finished. So it gives the kids an idea of, of what he's supposed to look like. All right, so they can build it right here on their mat, like I'm doing. Okay, so again, they're gonna roll. And they're just going to keep rolling until they get all the pieces. And they're going to go ahead and build their little, you get the idea, their little dog. This one goes here. Okay. This one goes, this, this one goes right here. And then you got the tail. There you go. We built a brown dog. And then you can talk about how some dogs are brown. And you can even talk about how some browns, you can have a light, lighter brown and a darker brown. I wanted to really quickly just show you some other manipulatives that you can use for the kids when you're doing colors. So these uh, little snap cubes come in all sorts of different colors and I really love them. And you can have the kids um, search through here and find all the brown ones and put them together and make, you know, something out of them, whatever they want to make. They can make a letter or a number and so on. I'm kind of making the letter L here. but. Um, what they have to do is they have to search through and just find the brown ones because we're working on brown. Okay, and then another option is really quick over here. I have some erasers. We love to use these little erasers. And in here, I would just show them to the kids and I would say, can you find a set of erasers that is the color brown and then of course they would find these ones and these ones are footballs so you could talk about how footballs are the color brown and then you could even practice counting them because obviously preschoolers are working on counting as well okay this next activity is the brown build it mat and these you use whoop, with a play-doh so i've got a talker in the background sorry guys so these are you gonna use with Play-Doh. So they're gonna build a football, and these are just different mats that they can actually do the Play-Doh right on top of the mat. So they're gonna build a football, an acorn, a 
brown guitar, a stick that's brown, a cookie that's brown, and a fence. So we can talk about all those different things that we see in life that are brown. Okay, so just to give you an example for the stick, you're going to give them the mat like this. Mine are laminated. And then they're going to go ahead and take their brown Play Doh, roll it out. And mine is already kind of rolled out because we were using it for other things. And they're going to try to make the stick just like the picture here. There you go. I don't know if that really worked, but <laughs> you get the idea. But you need to have brown Play Doh to do it. A guitar, you can. Um, have them do all of the pieces brown, even though some of them are gray on here or whatever. They can do the entire thing brown. And so on. So that's that activity. I've got one more to show you. My last activity here is spin and cover brown. And as I'm pulling this out, I want to show you. These are the instruction labels that I provide with each of the activities. And I print them out on this Avery label, label paper. And then I stick them right onto the bag. Now for this one, I haven't done it yet, so I'll just show you how I do it. I just peel it off like so. It's nice and easy. I buy the full sheet label. So this was a full sheet and I cut it out. And then I go ahead and stick it on there. And then I keep everything in the bag so I know what it is, I know how to do it. And we, when we pull it out, we've got the directions with it and everything. So you do not have to do that. You could just print this out black and white or whatever you want. So you have the directions and just keep it with it. You don't have to print it on, on label paper, but that's what I do. And I want to just let you guys know, I do have a, a, a loud little guy in the background. And so I'm sorry if that bothers you, but that's just kind of how we roll around here. I have seven kiddos and so Whenever I can get around to doing a video where most of the kiddos are happy and doing something, that's what I do. Sometimes I still have some loudness in the background, uh, but hopefully you guys can get past that. Okay, so this comes with two mats, one with the brown dog and one with the brown bear. So we can talk about how dogs are brown and bears are brown. And you can pick whichever mat that you want the kiddos to do. So I'm going to pick this one just for purposes of showing you. You need to either buy these little spinners. I got these uh, off Amazon. They're really, really cheap. They come in a pack of, oh, a handful of them. I don't remember how many were in there. But um, I just reuse them because I just put a little piece of tape and I stick them on. As long as it sticks a little bit, it's perfectly easy to use. And then I just take the tape off and we use them again on different activities. So I don't necessarily have to buy and buy a new set for all of our different activities. Or you can use a little sticky tack, and sticky tack will come on and off as well. Or Velcro. I've seen people um, mention using Velcro as well. So that way you can just stick it on that one, and then I can go ahead and use it on this one as well, as long as I have little pieces of Velcro. So, all right, mine are not attached yet, but you're going to get the idea. So they're going to spin, and mine landed on a football. So footballs are brown, and then you give them any kind of manipulative you have, and they're going to cover up the brown things and so they could even use little pieces of play-doh they can roll them into a ball and cover up a football they're going to roll again now it lands on let's say the cowboy boot so they can talk about cowboy boots are brown and they can roll out some play-doh and cover up a cowboy boot and they're going to keep going until they've covered up all of the different brown um items on their mat Again, you don't have to use Play-Doh with this one, but that was just an example. You could use your little um, football erasers. That would be a cute idea since I have those. So anyways, uh, whatever you have that is brown that you want to use to cover them up, even if there's like a little, I'm trying to think of a little food snack that you might have. Um, you might have, oh, you might even be able to have the kids like during science time go out and find acorns and then they could use the brown little acorns to cover it up. That would be a cute idea now that I'm looking at the squirrel with his acorns. Uh, so anyways, whatever you have this brown. Oh, and in the example, I have some brown um, buttons there that you could use to cover it up. So uh, once they finish that mat, they could go ahead and do the other mat, or you could save it for another day, and they could do it again another day. Or if you're a classroom teacher, and you can put these at a center, and if they still have time after they finish one, then they can go ahead and start on the other one, however you wanted to do it. That is it, guys. That's the end of my video here showing you our preschool activities for week six of the hands-on to learn preschool curriculum. These activities are only the color and the shape activities 
I also have the, again, like I said, I believe I mentioned, the alphabet activities and the number activities. So the number for this week is the number six, because it's week six. So we're on to the number six, and then the letters are the letters M and N for this week. And I will try to remember to do a separate video on that. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for being uh, patient with me as my videos have been kind of sparse lately. My goal is to get one video up a week, but that doesn't always happen. I don't believe I got a video up last week. We had some really crazy, we've had really crazy things going on. <laughs> Um, around here. I won't get into it too much, but um, just some crazy family things. Not anything bad per se, but I mean like my my oldest son um, was playing outside and he dislocated his kneecap. So we had that going on. We had some other things going on. Nothing super bad, so you don't have to worry about us, but just busy. Just keeping us super busy. So um, I haven't been able to do as much as I would like, but Hey, I got a video in. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I can start getting videos done a little bit faster for you guys, because I really do enjoy doing them. I really love showing you the curriculum we're using and uh, all of our activities, and I know it helps you guys. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like me to do, like things that, I know I used to do um, like my six ways videos. Did you guys like that? Uh, those videos, I, you know, they were kind of long, but they've been some of my most popular videos. So I might get into something like that again. The reason I was doing six ways was because I have six kids and I just picked that number. But now I have seven kids, so I'd have to do like seven ways videos. <laughs> and it might be interesting. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then <laughs> you can go back and look through my videos and see what I'm talking about. I used to do, I used to have a series called Six Ways Two, and then I would teach you how to do something um, educational wise, six ways. So anyways, now I'd have to do seven ways. But uh, I don't know if I'll do that series again or if I want to try to do something new. But I haven't really started a new series because I don't know like how often I can do videos. And uh, I also just like need to be inspired um, for what I want to do. So if you guys have any awesome ideas, you know, shoot them my way. Leave, leave a comment below and I will definitely take them into consideration. All right. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.